What are the White Sox doing when it comes to this roster? Let's discuss. You are Locked On White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And hello, I'm Todd Welter, a lifelong Sox fan and the site expert of Southside Showdown, part of the Fan Sided Network. You can check out my written White Sox content at southsideshowdown.com. And hey, thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And hey, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, smash that like button, and give a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts, as that would be greatly appreciated. So on uh, today's episode, we're going to focus on the aimless and inconsistent roster building of this team by general manager Chris Getz. Now, owner Jerry Reinsdorf promoted him without ever interviewing any other candidates uh, last uh, summer. Because Getz knew the team and could just turn things around quickly. Remember, Jerry said he owes it to the fans to turn things around quickly. Well, the White Sox are off to their worst start in 124 years of the franchise. That's right, 124 years. The team is truly 30 of 30. Not 30 for 30, 30 of 30. They are dead last by a country mile. I love that phrase, country mile. This team should be in a full-on rebuild instead of uh, patchworking a roster of just one war players, veteran players too, who's uh, who are well past their career seasons. You want an example? Martin Baldonado should have been moved to backup catcher the moment Corey Lee started hitting. The moment Luis Robert Jr. got hurt, it should have been Oscar Colas getting another shot, or Nick DeLoach should have been called up, rather than giving it bats to Robbie Grossman and Kevin Pillar. And now, Tommy Pham is reported to be signing a minor league deal, so just more players in their 30s who are nearing the end of their career, rather than players in their 20s with their careers ahead of them, whether it's going well or not. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Hey, I admit it, I have a competitive side, and... It is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. So uh, let me get a sip of my coffee here. For those uh, that have been listening since I've taken over, big coffee drinker, um, like mine with a little bit of cream. You know, I'm a a half and half guy. Yeah, I, I just I can't do it fully black. You know, I haven't reached that part of ruggedness yet. So uh, I'm drinking, uh, for those um, that are not on YouTube, using the Chicago Bears mug. Because, yes, I'm I'm very crazy uh, that I love the Chicago Bears. Big Bears fan, big Blackhawks fan, big White Sox fan. You would think at some point I'd be like, you know what, I, I, I should watch some entertaining teams. Teams that are good, not me, loyalty. And also keeps me humble. So anyway, Tommy Pham is reported to be signing a minor league deal. He was uh, one of the two top 40 free agents left on the market, according to the the Athletic. He uh, did finish as a 1.9 F4 player last year, 119 games with the Mets and the Diamondbacks. He uh, batted a combined 256 with 16 home runs and a 774 OPS. Um, He was also really good in the playoffs for the Diamondbacks. Uh, had a 1.071 OPS in the five games um, against the Dodgers, and then in the World Series, 1.165. And again, there's nothing wrong with signing a veteran outfielder, especially on a one-year minor league deal. There's no such thing as a bad one-year deal. But, and I wrote about this on Southside Showdown, it's the timing and some of the rationale. And I retweeted this. Uh, NBC Sports Chicago's pre- and post-game host, Chuck Garfine, uh, he was on foul territory. And he said that the offense is so bad. And he again, he this is just what, what he was coming up with. 
as maybe a reason why they signed him, uh, that this is a, a, an attempt to help the lineup. And I know Chuck can annoy fans with his optimism, but you got to remember this guy has to watch this team 162 games. I have no problem with Chuck Garfine. You know, I, I know that there was a little bit of um, uh, some some Twitter beef between him and a couple other guys uh, in Sox social media slash um, actual media about how he felt about what the team did this offseason. But there's nothing wrong with being optimistic. Also, I think uh, NBC Sports Chicago does a really good job of balancing him out with Ryan McGuffey when he's on the White Sox Talk po- White Sox Talk podcast, another podcast that you should be listening to. Just listen to me first, please. And then Ozzy Guillen on the pre and post game show do a great job of balancing him out. But if adding Fam to help fix an offense that is the worst in runs by a country mile is just foolish, and I'm not saying Chuck is foolish. All Chuck was doing was giving his opinion. And he's a lot closer to Chris Getz than me. I'm just saying a 36-year-old who is a decent to a solid player's entire career is not going to fix how bad this lineup is. This team lost 2 to nothing yesterday to the Royals. They're probably on pace to break the record for most games getting shut out. And, sorry, I'm battling a cold here. Um, you know... Tommy Pham is not going to be the difference in yesterday's loss to the Kansas City Royals. This team, you know, Rick Hahn, or um, Chris Getz, I'm going to get to Rick Hahn, you know, in the offseason, focused on getting better clubhouse characters and defense. What he didn't do was get defensive guys that could hit because they're out there. They exist. There are people that there are players that can catch the ball and hit. They cost money. And we all know Jerry's not going to, you know, give him money to get those guys. Instead, he's going to go get Paul DeYoung and Nicky Lopez. Pretty much guys that are automatic outs way past their career year. And Nicky Lopez, he doesn't hit for a power at all. Paul DeYoung is either. Home run or out. You know, get some guys that can also hit some doubles, maybe. But no, we gotta improve the clubhouse. We gotta build a team for Pedro Grafal. We gotta get some grinders. And the problem is, is grinders usually don't win a ton of games. They're part of winning teams. You know, Jerry Reinsdorf can say David Eckstein's his favorite player, but you know what he's got to realize? David Eckstein played with some really good players. That's why he won. That's why he beat you. And what's really frustrating about where they're directionless is uh, Vinny Duber had this out. Um, Jonathan Cannon, he's going to start today. But Pedro Gafal is non-committal on Nick Nastrini and Cannon being part of the rotation moving forward. The Sox are going to get Eric Fetty, Garrett Crochet, extra rest. Chris, Chris Flexen is still the starter for now, but will pitch out of the pen. Anybody else confused by that statement? Because I know I am. Number one, Chris Flexen has been awful. And we'll get to him in a little bit. At that point, after three starts, he should have a really tight rope because a lot of these veterans should. Because this is a lost year. They're not turning things around. They're not going to be competitive this year. There's too many holes in the roster. There's too much lack of depth. So what you got to see is, is there anything left over from the previous regime that can help you compete down the road? Like Jonathan Cannon and Nick Nastarini. Nastarini. Sorry to you Italians out there. But, you know, and I know A.J. Przinsky and I retweeted this. He no longer works for the White Sox because they cannot develop players. This is the time to see, you know, the guy that actually was in charge of player development, who's now the general manager, should see what is left over from the previous regime that can help maybe long term. What can be part of the next good White Sox roster? You could say, I don't know if they'll ever be good. Well, we, we've been on this roller coaster before, White Sox fans. Remember the white fl- flag trade? Eight years later, they won the World Series. Even the rebuild made the playoffs. So what is really frustrating is, is this team just is so directionless because it keeps going with veterans some days. And then it's like, oh, we're going to go to the young guys. Stick with the young guys. That way, this this terrible season is more palatable. 
But another reason why the White Sox are obviously in this mess is they've put a lot of faith into Eloy Jimenez, Yoan Moncada, and Luis Robert Jr. staying healthy. And obviously they're on the IL. And uh, speaking of Eloy, we're going to discuss his return because he's back, baby. Uh, we're going to discuss his return from the 10-day 10 10 day, 10 day IL and why you should be scared next on Locked On White Sox. All right, there we go. For those uh, people listening on the podcast, uh, my Monopoly Go uh, graphic was not displaying right away. So uh, I apologize for that. But hey, I've been told I'm a competitive person. Okay, well, we all have a competitive side. And if you're denying it, I'm going to call you a, I'm going to call you out. And then I'm going to ask you to go play Monopoly Go with me. Because my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. The best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. You want to pay 500000 for Park Place? You're going to do it in my game. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. And hey, finding tickets at affordable price can be tough these days, not with game time. I'm looking to find the best deal for when the Sox come to Milwaukee and face the Brewers in May, and you can bet I'm using game time. I've got you know my eyes on the lookout for some really good prices. First reason, game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Second, great prices, and I can preview the view of the seat I want to purchase at the lowest price guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. You can bet I got my eye on some of those low, low prices when the Sox play Milwaukee in late May and early June. If you want to make the tr easy trip up north, I suggest you do the same. The lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference, and game time's ticket coverage um, covers is, co is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork, the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on L O C K E D on O N M L B for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute ticket tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And it's locked on NFL's locked on's NFL mock draft live on April seventeenth at seven Eastern, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today twenty four seven streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six episode series on April 17th at 7 Eastern to hear who the to hear who the locked on experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The locked on NFL mock draft on April 17th at 7 Eastern streaming live on locked on sports today 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. So. Eloy is back from the 10-day IL. The White Sox announced um, that they brought him off the IL uh, yesterday. He hurt his left adductor muscle in the third game of the season. At the time, he was 2-for-11 and once again carried on the tradition like the Masters and leaving cookies out for Santa by going on the injured list. There's a couple things that you can set your watch to, and one of them is Eloy Jimenez, 
going on the IL. His career high for games played in a season is 122. The guy has played five years, and the most games he's ever played is 122. He also was not in the starting lineup last night as Pedro Gafol wants to ease him back into the lineup. You know, ease him back into things. So that probably means he's still hurt, right? That's the way I think it. But we can't really get down on him too much because this team needs power as their last in home runs. They're not driving the ball. Linny and Sosa absolutely crushed one to the warning track yesterday. So they definitely need some guys that can get the ball in the air and try to get it over the fence. But here's the scary thing. Pedro Gafal said per uh, CHGO's uh, White Sox beat reporter, Vinny Duber, quote, Grafal said the Sox are giving consideration to the idea of either Eloy or Gavin Sheets playing the field to get both bats in the lineup. Doing so with Sheets sounds far more likely with Grafal, when, with Grafal saying Eloy would only do so after being back from the IL for a while. We're doing this again, people. We're asking two players to play out of position. Eloy can't field, and Sheets is a first baseman. The problems of the roster redundancy left over from Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams. But asking Eloy to play the field where he's actually gotten hurt a few times is basically asking to put Eloy back on the IL at some point. Also, the whole point of uh, this offseason, the whole point of this exercise that I thought was supposed to be to upgrade the defense. And Gavin Sheets and Eloy Jimenez are not natural outfielders. They're not very good at, you know, getting to the ball. So I get that Sheets is off to a great start. And you want to keep that bat in the lineup. But uh, here's an idea. Andrew Vaughn is not doing well right now. Maybe put him on the bench. And have, you know, Sheets, if you're going to do. Now, if you're going to do that, then yeah, you put Sheets in right field. I guess. But don't put Eloy in the field. Don't. Now, he did play a little bit better of a right field than he did left field last year. But you're just asking for trouble by putting Eloy in the field. You're just he, He's bound to pull a muscle there. You know, and, and again, this was supposed to stop. One of the reasons, one of the many, many reasons this title window slammed shut was this playing players out of position. Having Andrew Vaughn play right field because we, you know, we don't have a place for him. You know. Asking Elvis Andrews to play second base. You know, just stop with this. Ask the guys to do what they can do. I get you want to have them be like, hey, I'm willing to do anything to help the team. But ask them to do things then that they're good at. Eloy Jimenez is a DH. So is Gavin Sheets. And that was the other thing then. You should have realized you had roster redundancy and moved one of them. And I get you probably wouldn't have gotten any much for Gavin Sheets. But still, get rid of this roster redundancy in this type. Like, if you want to have roster redundancy, be roster redundant up the middle. Because those guys are usually versatile players. Guy doesn't work out at second and short, move him to third. You know, guy doesn't work out in center field, move him to left. Not working out a catcher? Hey, those guys can be moved to left field too, or first base. That's what the Milwaukee Brewers are doing. That's what the the Rays do. You don't want to be roster redundant, though, at power hitting non fielding players. That's why you never really saw the White Sox have anybody else besides Frank Thomas. You know, on those 90s rosters, uh, I know, it, it's just, it's frustrating because I don't think anybody foresaw it being, like, we knew it was going to be bad, but we didn't think it was going to be this bad. Like, we thought maybe, you know, hey, they would get off to a, eh, you know, an eh, 
but this team is terrible and it's directionless. And again, that quote from Grafal just makes it look even more. You know, if this team was getting crushed because they were playing nothing but youngsters, okay, that makes sense. We're playing veteran guys, and then we're asking them to play out of position. <sighs> well, enough with all this grumbling. Let's get to get some good news. You know, I I don't want to be making you feel all sad. So let's get to get some good news. We'll discuss Nick Nastarini's great, uh, pretty good start to the uh, season or uh, to his major league debut. We'll discuss that next on Locked On White Sox. Are you struggling to close deals? B2B selling is tougher than ever, and that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize, and shows you hidden ally, hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date, the first-party data enabling you to unlock conversations with people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash, slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to the just go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on and get started. Well, I want to thank you for sticking with me. Um, especially you everydayers. We know that uh talking, you know just paying attention to this team can be very, very taxing. And I signed up to do that, do this every day. As you're listening to Lockdown White Sox, your team every day. And again, those people that just uh, are sticking with me throughout this, I, I appreciate it. We're on episode four with me hosting. And like I said, I just want to get to some, to some good news. We rarely have much good with the Chicago White Sox this year. You know, the Chicago White Sox, uh, Bernstein and Holmes show on 670 The Score had uh, a great segment once about saying, like, the White Sox are great at taking everything good away, especially during, like, the Christmas season. They're like the Grinch who stole Christmas. Anything good, they're just going to take it away. But Nick Nastarini, he made his Major League debut. He uh, had a line score where he um, went five innings, gave up two runs on three hits, walked two, and struck out five. He cruised through the order the first time. You know, usually uh, as long as uh, a rookie pitcher gets over their nerves right away, they're going to cruise through the order at least the first time because there's not much of a scouting report. But then he gave up a home run ball to Vinny Pascatino in the fourth uh, inning. It was a no-doubter. Like, the moment... The sound that came off his bat, it was like thunder. And that ball went at least 425 feet. Uh, then the Royals got some runners on base in the fifth, but Nastarini, he minimized the damage to just a run. Uh, overall, I thought he pitched well. A lot of movement on um, all of his pitches. Another example of, again, where are we going with this team? What should Chris Getz be doing? Nick should be the fifth starter now for the rest of the season. The only way he should go back to Charlotte is if there is just major struggles. And in the first game, he looked composed. He looked cool up on the mound. He looked the part of a guy who at least should be a back-of-the-end rotation pitcher going forward. And again, you need those guys. You need solid number fours or number fives or even number threes. And he should have broken camp with the club after he posted a 3.77 ERA with 11 strikeouts and 14 and a third innings uh, in Cactus League. Uh, the reason why he didn't is the Sox 
uh, didn't need a fifth starter over the past 15 games. They needed it one time, and they decided, and it didn't make sense. Let's just go with Tanner Banks as the opener. You know, Nash Rainey uh, got some innings at AAA instead. Uh, he did give up seven runs, six of them earned in seven innings of work, but he did have 13 strikeouts to just three walks in those games. Um. He had 116 strikeouts last year at Double A, where he split time between the Dodgers affiliate because he came over in the Lance Lynn deal, and the White Sox affiliate. Uh, according to the scouting report on MLB.com, Nastrini's uh, fastball, and again, I, I'm Nastrini fastball can reach as high as 98 miles per hour in the gun. He's going to keep it between 93 to 96. He can get a lot of spin on that slider, and he'll mix in his curveball and a changeup. And again, everything was. Seemed to be working uh, last night against the Royals. He does need to grow in his command and control. And then obviously keeping uh, the consistency in his man me mechanics. Don't be worried, though. Remember, there is no such thing as a perfect pitcher. Well, maybe Greg Maddox and Pedro Martinez and Mark Burley. Um, but the Sox are also now making another move today. Uh, Jonathan Cannon, 23-year-old rookie. He will start against the Royals tonight. One of the reasons is, again, and this makes sense, give Garrett Crochet and Eric Feedy uh, an extra day, especially Crochet. You know, as as we've all known, he he's barely pitched until this season. You know, Tommy John knocked him out of the 2022 season. So it makes sense to space out his starts, give him some rest. It also makes sense to not have Chris Flexen on the, on the mound. 8.78 ERA over three games. He got roughed up for six runs and seven hits in two and two-thirds innings against the Reds. We don't know if he's a starter or a bullpen guy because Pedro Gafal loves to uh, be a little tricky, even though it doesn't make any sense. Uh, the Sox have not officially announced the call-up, but he's there. All the, report, uh, the beat reporters said he's there. He's going to start tomorrow. Uh, Cannon was ranked the ninth best prospect by futuresocks.net. Uh, they did that, though, in March before the uh, Padres uh, trade with Dylan Cease. Uh, he's the 11th ranked prospect, according to MLB.com. Third round pick in 2022. Uh, has pitched well in two games for AAA Charlotte this season. Did have a 5.77 ERA and 11 starts at AA Birmingham after he got a promotion uh, last year. Uh, but at high A ball, 2.79 ERA. Or he, he was good last year at high A ball and then had a 2.79 ERA and 11 Ks in his two starts for the Knights. Uh, Future Sox thinks his floor is, uh, you know, back to the back of the rotation pitcher. Scouting report from MLB.com has him with the ability to throw six pitches, um, although Future Sox says he's usually only throwing four. Uh, fastball that can top out at 97, but it's usually in the 92 to 95 mile an hour area. But again, he, if he shows, just like Nastrini, anything, he should be up. I don't want to see Chris Flexen start unless there's an injury. I don't want to see Mike Clevenger with this team, well, at all. But if we got to go with Mike Clevenger, it should be an injury. Let's give these young guys a shot because we got nothing else to lose. This team is terrible. You know, focus on the future. I know Jerry thinks they're going to be good. They're not. Let's see what's left over, and then let's get into the draft and start building up the farm system. Well, that wraps up this edition of Locked On White Sox. Before I go, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV's channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So we'll be back tomorrow and to talk about what should the White Sox do with Andrew Vaughn's struggles. And let me know your thoughts on today's topics regarding the aimless direction the Sox are on when it comes to the roster construction and the long-term um outlook of the team you can uh reach out to me on twitter at todd j dub or you can email you can email me at lockdown white at gmail.com 
Have a great day. See you tomorrow.